In excellent news for those who care about the existence of planet Earth and our survival here, internal combustion engine vehicles have crashed 60% in Europe in comparison to their 2017 peak. And at the same time, the sales of electric cars have just hit 21% in Europe. That's for the entire continent. And that, my friends, is incredible. Hello and welcome to the channel. On the Electric Viking, it's great to have you here. My name is Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. If you're a new subscriber, welcome to the channel. And if you're not, welcome back. Great to see you. I'm sorry I've been out of it for a little bit. Had a staph infection, which I actually got in hospital when I had a pretty major accident on my bike. And I got a video on the channel about that accident. I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Check that out if you haven't already seen it. So just a word of advice here. Try not to get a staph infection. Not real nice. Pretty unpleasant. Apparently thousands of people die from it every year. Yeah, so try to uh, avoid that if you can. Jose Pontes reports for Clean Technica that despite declining growth in the rate of new car sales, in fact, incredible declines in growth in Europe, the European passenger plug-in electric vehicle market has grown significantly in March, especially considering that the overall new car sales market fell off a cliff and it's down 19% year on year or around 50% versus what it was in 2017. This marks its ninth month in a row where it's in the red. But at the same time, the sales of electric vehicles continue to increase. Approximately 250,000 plug-in vehicles were registered in March. That's the second best month ever in terms of total sales, but it's actually the best month ever in terms of the percentage of cars sold with a plug. In total, in Europe, 565,000 plug-in electric vehicles were sold in the first quarter of the year, and that's an increase of 24% year on year. Last month, growth came solely from electric cars, which are up 47%, 47% versus the same month last year. However, plug-in hybrids, well, no one really wants them anymore they were down 22%. So this means that purely electric vehicles are taking a much bigger market share when it comes to plug-ins. Now, 62% of all plug-in vehicles sold in Europe are fully electric and only 38% are plug-in hybrid. So this means that last month, 22% of all vehicles sold in Europe were plug-ins, 14% were fully electric, and 7% were plug-in hybrid. Now, also interesting is the fact that OEMs like BMW, Toyota, Ford, etc., well, their share of the market is decreasing in Europe in much the same way as it is in China. Not as fast, but the same thing is happening. However, one of the big players who has avoided losing market share is Kia. They're actually up 22% year on year. Why? Well, they're making more plugins and fully electric cars. The same thing goes for other manufacturers willing to make electric cars, right? Tesla, they're up 73%. Volvo is up 100%. MG, up 60%. And DS, which also makes a lot of electric cars, they're up 22%. So the winners in March, Tesla came first and second. In first place was the Model 3 with 23,200 deliveries. In second place was the Tesla Model Y with 19,500 deliveries. In third, Fiat 500e, all the way down at only 6,500. In fourth, Kia Nero EV, 5,300. In fifth, the Volkswagen ID4 with 5,000. Then we got the Ford Cougar Fev plug-in hybrid with 4,938. So that was the best placed plug-in hybrid. Seventh, there was the Renault Zoe with 4,273 deliveries. Then the Peugeot E208 with 4,270. Then the Hyundai Kona EV, 4,204. Finishing off the top 10 
with the Audi Q4 e-tron with 4,146. And the cheapest EV was in 11th place, the Dacia Spring with 3,951 deliveries. Now, Jose made an interesting point here, and I'm going to debunk that for you because it's feeding into myths, myths which are grounded in emotion, not logic. I'll share it with you. He said, the Tesla Model 3 was another great month. In Europe, it had 23,200 registrations. But, shock horror, it seems the sedan's deliveries are flattening. Q1 monthly sales average was 10,967 units. That's only a 6% improvement compared to the same period of 2021. Will 2022 be peak Model 3 for Europe? Well, no. Of course, sales are flatlining because Tesla has, well, between 6 months to 18 months backlog in most countries where it sells the Tesla Model 3, as is every manufacturer their production constraint. They can only sell as many as they can build. Once they can build more, they can certainly sell more. A lot more than 23,000 in a month, that's for sure. Now, the incredible thing, as Jose says, is that sedans are not popular in Europe. And I've said that on this channel many times. No one else seems to point this out. It's still remarkable to me that sedans are selling so well in so many countries around the globe when clearly they fell out of popularity about five years ago, many companies just stopped making sedans, period. Mitsubishi, one of them. They don't make them anymore at all because they don't sell. Unless it's a Tesla Model 3 or some other electric cars as well. Regarding March's performance, Model 3 deliveries were mostly concentrated pretty heavily in Europe's bigger markets, including Germany, where 5,500 were delivered, France, 3,882, and the UK, 6,500, Norway, 1,700. But Norway is a pretty small country. Only 5 million people live in Norway. Model Y deliveries. Model Y, 2,529 deliveries in Germany, 6,500 in the UK, 3,300 in Norway, and in Sweden, 1,363. Now, obviously, we're going to see more Model Y deliveries in Europe this year than we will for Tesla Model 3 sedan deliveries, thanks just to Tesla's ability to produce the Model Y. Obviously, the Gigafactory in Berlin is not set up for Tesla Model 3 production. It's set up for Model Y production. And therefore, obviously, by the end of this year, the Model Y will catch up and beat the Tesla Model 3. Now, the question is, though, can the Tesla Model Y actually get a bestseller award this year in Europe, as in bestseller for the month, it's very possible we could see that happen. Now, there were a couple of Chinese cars that did quite well. SAIC's MG electric crossover got a best ever 3,285 deliveries. Another made in China vehicle, the Polestar 2. That had a record month with 3,139 registrations. If you've already bought a Polestar and you thought you were buying a European Swedish vehicle, it is in fact Chinese. Now, for many of you, that may be a good thing. I don't know, but just letting you know. Now, one thing that was really surprising was the position of the BMW i3, which, to be honest, is a bucket of bolts. The thing came an incredible 14th place with 3,788 deliveries. That was its best ever month of sales, ever, even though it's nine years old. The thing is ancient. And to be honest, the technology is ancient. Uh, for what you pay, it's an absolute ripoff. But hey, people are just desperate for any kind of electric car right now. So clearly, people are just buying what's available. What about the Ford Mustang Mach-E? Well, 2,403 were delivered in Europe, meaning that Ford was outsold by the Tesla Model Y at a ratio of around about 10 to 1. Now, one thing I thought was quite interesting was Tesla's rapid rise up the ranks of manufacturers. In the automaker ranking, Tesla jumped out of nowhere into first place, displacing BMW from the top spot or Mercedes was pushed down into third place, last place on the podium. Tesla took 10.5% of the market, BMW 9%, Mercedes 8.9%. 
Quite remarkably, Volkswagen took only 5.9% of the market. However, as an automotive group, Volkswagen is still ahead. It took first place with a 17.5% share. That includes all the Volkswagen brands, Audi, Skoda, etc. Stellantis came second with 14.7%. Hyundai Kia was in third place with 11.3%, followed by the BMW Group, which includes Mini with 11%, and then Tesla with 10.5%. Now, it's going to be interesting to see just how much of this market share Tesla can take up by the end of this year. What does this all come down to? Really, what it comes down to is ability to produce. And clearly, Tesla has the ability to produce the most EVs right now, so they're going to continue to dominate the market this year, whether that's Model 3, Model Y, or whatever model they sell. It will sell like hotcakes in Europe. As you can see, people are buying the i3, a nine-year-old car with abysmal specs for a lot of money. So really what it comes down to is supply. And supply is what Tesla will try their best to do. So will everyone else this year. It's really interesting to see what happens. One thing is certain, the Chinese EV makers will continue their rapid rise in terms of their electric vehicle deliveries. While really, to be fair, the rest of the legacy automotive world is struggling really badly to produce vehicles, period, let alone what the market wants, which is, of course, electric cars. Now, the key thing to remember here, the market for electric cars has never been hotter. It's never represented a greater percentage of the overall market than what it does right now. And that, my friends, is excellent news. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.